So just a real quick discussion of the theorem of Apollonius, sometimes called the Apollonian theorem. Um, so this doesn't have a right triangle in it. It starts out with just any old triangle ABC um, and constructs the median from A to the side BC. So medians are starting to come back at us. One of the things I've noticed, by the way, um, especially in revisiting the, the revisions that you submitted to homework uh, in the first part of the semester, um, it feels like because in chapter two we made such a big deal about the concurrency of medians and altitudes and perpendicular bisectors and all that stuff, um, it feels like a lot of people want to use those concurrency results for, for stuff all the time. Like anytime you see the word median, like, oh, the medians are concurrent, let's try and use that. Um, it's not as valuable in some of these proofs as, as you might make it out to be, um, even if it is always true. Um, so we have a median, which means that M bisects the side BC. Um, and then the Pythagorean-like result is that the sum of the squares of the lengths of AB and AC is not equal to the square of, uh, of, uh, of BC, as you might be hopeful uh, to believe, but instead is equal to twice the sum of the squares of AM and BM. So I might sort of factor the 2 out on that side and look at it this way, bm squared. So it kind of, it's, it's interesting because it gives us a proportionality of a different sort in this triangle, a proportionality between the sum of the squares of those two orange sides and the sum of the squares in these two sides, right? that the orange sum is twice as long as the pink sum, where we're thinking of the sum of squares here. Um, so you can envision that, uh, first of all, one of the quantities, one of the four lengths in the statement of this theorem is related to the, the lengths in the original triangle, because after all, M is the midpoint of BC. So don't forget that BM, this length, would actually be one half of BC. So sometimes the statement of, of Apollonian theorem has BC over 2 in there in place of BM, because M really is the midpoint. Uh, we can relate that back to one of the lengths in our original um, triangle. So um, we squint really hard at the Apollonian theorem. We can see the Pythagorean theorem kind of popping out a little bit. Um, because we have AB squared plus AC squared on one side, and then over on the right-hand side, we have something that looks like the square of the length of the third side. Right? Um, so one of the things that we might ask as, as mathematicians about this is, well, what if this were a right triangle to begin with? If this were a right triangle with the right angle being at A, I suppose in this case, um, then this would have to reduce back down to the Pythagorean theorem. So. That's something that is, is worth, uh, worth exploring, just to see if you have a grip on how all of this stuff works. What if angle A were 90 degrees, and then the Pythagorean theorem applies? Because then in that case, this left-hand side would have to equal BC squared. So you might try investigating that, doing the algebra to simplify the right-hand side into just BC squared. Um, so that's kind of a, that would be a little enrichment activity. Um, but with that aside, um, let's take a look at, at what you wrote here. Um, so one of the things, so Raquel says right away, I don't really understand what's going on in this equation. Um, how, did you, how did you get to, so how are we to interpret this equation? So I think that thinking of it as, the sums of the squares of those two different pieces of the triangle that we looked at, one of those pieces is the median, um, <coughs> is one way to do it. Um, and I guess the, the degree of difficulty in actually using Apollonius's theorem is that in order to determine the length of the median AM, we would need to know the lengths of all three of the original sides of the triangle. But that could be a way of thinking about it, that if I don't know how to find the length of AM, we can solve for AM. So the length of the median, in terms of the lengths of the original triangle, AB, AC, and BC. Because after all, BM is just half of BC. Right? 
Um, so that's the utility of this theorem. It can let us discover what the length of the median in a triangle is. Let's just take a quick look at how the Pythagorean theorem is being used uh, in, in the service of the proof of the Apollonian theorem. So the author drops the perpendicular an altitude from A down to BC. And in doing so, we get three right triangles. One of those right triangles is ADB. And so from that right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to say AD squared plus BD squared is equal to AB squared. So that's one thing that we know based on having one right triangle. Um, but then we also get a second one, uh, ADC. And from that second right triangle, we get, again by the Pythagorean theorem, AD squared plus now DC squared is equal to AC squared. And so then the author says, well, each of these two applications of the Pythagorean theorem tells us a small piece of what we want to know. Because looking back at the Apollonian theorem statement, what the theorem statement says, let me get it written up here again, is the theorem statement is AB squared plus BC squared is equal to 2 times AM squared, quantity AM squared, plus BM squared. Right? So that's the original statement. And the, then the author is kind of saying, well, AB squared happens to be on the right-hand side of that first equation that I just wrote down. AC squared happens to be, sorry, BC squared happens to be, uh, maybe squared plus BC squared, 2AM squared, blah, blah, blah. Um, oh, right. Um, and AC squared is on the right-hand side of the second equation. So what the author's doing is just adding these two equations together, taking our two Pythagorean theorem observations, adding the two of them together to get to this line. Right? AB squared plus AC squared, that's the right-hand side uh, sum in these two equations, is equal to BD squared, which came from here, plus CD squared, which came from there, plus twice AD squared, which came from there. So that's where the first line of this is coming from. But then again, the author refers back to the original statement and says, well, I still have some quantities in here that aren't accounted for. I don't have a BC squared, and I don't have any M action happening at all in my equation. So I need to bring the midpoint M into the process, which he does by observing that BD is a straight angle and M is intermediate to it. So BD is equal to BM plus MD. And then likewise, um, AD squared, oh gosh, AD squared uh, is, oh gosh, yeah, how does this next, so what we still have to figure out is how we're going from this line to this line, because what it looks like is that the author is replacing CD with BM minus MD, and so we have to, to sort of figure out why that would be, um, but once that replacement gets made, the rest of the proof is nothing more than algebra, just summing out this, uh, the, the sum of the sum and difference of squares. Um, and then we get some cancellation, and we end up where we wanted to end up. Um, so let's take a look at how that step happens in the video. So this mysterious substitution here, uh, in which the author says that CD is equal to BM minus MD, we can understand that by rearranging this equation, adding MD to both sides, so that CD plus DM is equal to BM. Now, why should we believe that? Because CD plus DM, because those points are collinear, is CM. And CM is equal to BM precisely because M is the midpoint of the side BC. So that substantiates that substitution. And once that substitution is made, the rest is just algebra to get us to the proof of the Apollonian theorem.